Hello. Hey, how are you? How's it going? Yeah, I'm out here in the streets of Philadelphia, so I'm sorry if it's uh, a little noisy. Just uh, just out on this tour right now. You're in Montreal, correct? Yeah, I'm in Montreal, so we're going to see you on uh, Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday night, October the 3rd. Nice, but you're, you're Australian? No, I'm, I'm English. Uh, oh, a, lot, a lot of people think I'm Australian. I'm losing my voice today, so probably doesn't help. Yeah, yeah, I got you, got you. You are out on tour with Scowl. That's a good little lineup you've got going on there. How's it been? Tour has been amazing. I mean, every night has been so, so rowdy and, and fun. It's uh, couldn't ask for really a better situation. And a lot of the shows have been selling out. It's been, been amazing. Last time I saw you on tour with Touche Amore. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was at that show. And I think that was about the time that I discovered your band. Um, pretty much. Um, but it's it's still like a new thing for you, right? Like it's only been going since COVID. Yeah, yeah. It started basically the day that, that COVID shut everything down. Then it became my main focus in life uh, as of, you know, the rest of life ceasing to exist at the time. As it's still quite new, it feels like things are happening really quickly for you guys. As I say, I discovered you on the Touche Amore tour. And then since then, you've released this album, which I have to say is one of my favorite albums of the year. And now I'm hearing you on the radio. I just heard you on the Zane Lowe show on Apple as well. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So does it feel like it's happening fast for you? For us, I mean, it's complicated because we've been working on it for, we've been working on it, you know, like uh, at a suicidal pace for, for (laughs) since, since we possibly could, you know, like, we had band practice for over a year before. Yeah, we. I mean, we've been working on it like so hard for so long that, um, or you know, not not obviously so long, but for us, we've just been putting pouring so much of ourselves into this that it's it's difficult to see it as happening fast because we set out a plan and have been just like chipping away at at the plan for for quite a while. So, and, and you know, also when you're inside of it, you, I don't think you see the outside perception as much like it doesn't feel all too different to us we're just doing the same things that we've been doing you're on tour a lot like you've got this tour and then you've got another tour after that and then you go to europe so you're it's a hard slug for you right now right yeah yeah we're just keeping the the momentum moving you know we've also been recording new music and uh and just trying to keep that uh momentum and and not not lose anything uh while we have it is this new music stuff that you're writing on the road then uh not a ton of writing on the road but you know we had one month off between tours and and i uh had to make finish uh like a a record that we'll be announcing soon during that time you say the shows have been great so far what actually makes a good show for you a great show to me is the energy being reciprocated from us as performers and then uh, you know being handed back to us by the audience through people you know singing along and and jumping up and down and stage diving you know it's like we want our our shows to be a a very communal and uh reciprocal uh experience you know and we want to do things that make each performance as special as we can like we had this person, uh, Jer, who like is does a thing called Scotu Network, and they uh, they came up and played trombone for a couple songs for us. It was like, <laughs> nice. why not? You know, like like let let's make each live performance as special as we can. And you know, we try to have guests come on. As you know, if we have friends in a city, have them come sing with us, and try to do as much as we can to make each show its its own experience. Do you have friends in Montreal? Uh, we do. Yes. So anybody going to be getting on stage with you, you think? Um, probably not at that show. Obviously, it's also a little bit difficult when you are only in town for the day, so you can't rehearse anything too much. But we've 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 performed with yeah. Pretty Maddie from Pony um before uh, he, uh, they hopped up and and did a song with us before. But I don't know if we'll if we'll do that again this time. Did you have one band before this one, or how many bands were you before this? Oh, I mean, I've had a million, million bands before <laughs> this one. But I mean, the ones that that kind of led led here was I played in a band called Self Defense Family, and then I played in a band called Regional Justice Center, and those were kind of the things that got me the momentum towards Military Gun. Okay, so having said that, what were your goals for Military Gun when you started? 
I mean, when I started, it was just to write songs and, and make make a new type of song that I hadn't created before and, and try to learn how to use my voice in a new way. And then really it ended up just being that I put out the songs and it kind of had a better reception than a lot of things that I had done in the past. So it was about kind of, you know, it, one, engaging my own interest in, in developing this new way of writing songs, but then at the same time, you know, having that reciprocated by people of like being more enthusiastic about it than other projects that I had done. So where did music start for you? Like what was the, the moment in your life that you kind of fell in love with music? I mean, as long as I can remember, I've just been obsessively listening to music. Like even when I was a little kid, I just would get songs uh, stuck in my head all day and I would just watch music videos nonstop, music videos every day before school, every come home, watch music videos like uh, TRL was a big thing um, for me at a certain point. And yeah, just kind of the culture surrounding music always and the um, always had the desire to perform too. you know, like I'd always make up songs and like jump on the bed and pretend it was a stage. So it's really just <laughs> been been there as long as I can remember. What bands were you listening to back then when you were a kid? I mean, like the first things I ever was obsessed with were like Elton John and Garth Brooks. And then eventually when I started finding my own music, you know, like one of the first things before, like I got into like mainstream punk, punk rock at the time was like Pink Floyd. And then then it led to like Blink-182 and Sum 41 and Slipknot. And, and then eventually I started going more towards underground punk music like the casualties and and listening to older 77 punk like the addicts and and the ramones and and you know it just was kind of like starting that journey of of just delving as deeply as i could into the various sub genres of of uh punk music if i gave you 10 seconds to decide uh, do you have a favorite album of all time Favorite album of all time. I mean, uh, Abbey Road by the Beatles is uh, is the one I go back to the most often and and find new things to be obsessed about. I, I mean, as far as like punk records, I mean, it's there's it's really hard to pick because it's it's not a an all encompassing genre that like you can listen to at any moment. So it's harder, you know, like it's like oh, I'm in the mood for this type of thing instead of that, you know, like not the type of thing i could turn on at any single moment so it's hard to to pin any uh favorite of all time to just one punk record you know yeah it's, it's interesting listening to you talk about artists like the beatles and elton john because even though you are a punk rock band your, your music has a lot of melody like the song structure like there's, there's even like pop influences in the way you write the songs i think uh, would you agree with that Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, I've, I I I love pop music. My ultimate goal is to have a song that gets stuck in my head, you know, and and that's what I look for uh, in other people's music, and therefore it's also what I look for out of my own music. I want to be able to write a song and then you know forget I wrote it and then have it get stuck in my head because then I know that it's worth people hearing. You know, if it doesn't get stuck in my head, it it won't ever see the light of day if it's one of my own songs. What have you been listening to on the road? Uh, I mean, definitely was listening to uh, Let It Be last night. Uh, I've been listening to Bully a lot. I really do love the the most recent Bully record. Uh, the yeah, new Spiritual yeah. Cramp music that's been coming out. I've been on a huge uh, Elliot Smith kick lately. Was listening to Unwound the other day. Led me into some Fugazi. I love Lana Del Rey, and that's that's like one of my most common listens like if i don't know what to turn on i generally turn on lana del rey or the beatles and then i've been listening to a lot of no effects i love no effects uh war on errorism and i've just been kind of spending a lot of time with that record again and i just recently covered a song off of that record so uh been revisiting it a lot are you playing covers on these shows uh no our set is too short to accommodate covers i don't really care about doing i love doing a recorded cover but um, as far as like during a live performance, it feels like a little bit of a waste to spend the time on that when we could be playing a song that we wrote. How long are you playing? We get 30 minutes. Ah, oh, oh, that's too short. Yeah. So we got to we got to we got to keep it concise, you know, so it's like we got to get all the, the bangers that we can in. Yeah. 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 
Um, so if somebody had never heard your band, which song would you want them to start with? Um, I guess I would start with Do It Faster. I, I think that's a great entry point to the band. It's got the, the trademark ooh ooh in it. It's uh kind of it kind of fits all of the things that I hope to accomplish with the band, and it's one of our most catchy. So I think uh, I think I would start with, with Do It Faster. One thing that we like to play on this channel is fantasy rock band. So you can it's like fantasy football, but you can pick like a singer, a bass player, a guitarist, drummer, whatever you want. They can be alive or dead. Who would you oh, play? Okay. Perfect band? Shit. Okay, this is a this is a difficult one. A fantasy rock band. <laughs> I I mean at this point, I just I'll just it's gonna be John Paul Ringo and George. <laughs> I want them back. I want them back. <laughs> that's a cop out. <laughs> I don't know. I, that's a difficult one because, I mean, ultimately, I mean, I, I, I really believe in somewhat of the leadership of a single musician. So it's like, you know, like, I, you know, if you put a super group together, I think it likely sucks. So if I, if I could uh, do anything, I would just resurrect Elliot Smith. So Elliot Smith could write a couple more songs so I could listen to them. <laughs> yeah. Because I just, I just got into Elliot Smith. Like, I'm just getting into it. And it's the type of thing where you're like, it's a bummer to know that the road is ending in front of me. There's no more records, you know? Okay. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. but um, Okay, well, we're looking forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Um, yeah. I, I hope the rest of the tour goes well before that. It's, it's actually my anniversary, my wedding anniversary on Tuesday. <laughs> so um, have you got an excuse that I can give my wife? I, I, that it's the show of the year. You can't miss the show of the year. Come on. <laughs> I hope you have your voice back. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah.